Hello, everyone. My name is Mergen, Mergen Natchen. I'm a software engineer working, on Meta, working at Meta in PyTorch Edge team. And I'm here with my colleague, Martin Yuan, who's uh, also working the same team as a tech lead manager. Today, we are really excited to talk about Executorch Beta and on-device generative AI support. So, so on a high level, uh, our problem, the high level problem statement is that we want to deploy PyTorch models, uh, torch.nn module, onto phones, uh, edge devices. And in this talk, we will talk about how we can do that. And uh, coincidentally, or not coincidentally, we'll be using torch.export and torch.ao from the previous two talks. All right, stepping back, uh, there's an emergence of AI use cases, and it is expanding from the server to edge use cases, such as on mobile devices, to biosensors, to AO, uh, IoT devices, and recently more in personal agents and uh, agentic rob uh, ro robots. And the reason is that there is an actual real opportunity from a, from a use case perspective. Um, there's a real-time aspect of it. Uh, there's the privacy, enhanced privacy and personalization improvements you can get. And also uh, cost. Like if you're operating a company, a startup, you want to, if you have an uh, AI model running on a local device, you can actually save on costs. On the other hand, as of today, there's a big challenge to deploy AI models onto devices. Uh, namely, the hardware, uh, it has uh, power restrictions, memory restrictions, and thermal restrictions. And even for embedded devices like you know glasses, smart glasses, it has, uh, you don't want to heat it up uh, uh, very much. From also a software and hardware tool chain, there is a huge diversity of uh, hardware uh, available. So you want, that's a, a pretty hard problem right now. So these are some of the challenges. So uh, we built uh, Executors from the ground up. Uh, it is a solution, edge solution, inference solution for mobile and edge devices focusing on Android. It's supporting Android, iOS, and uh, embedded devices. Uh, it's a vertically integrated solution. So it, can, uh, it has, uh, it uses Torch to the exports. Uh, it has its own IR. It has as a quantization flow using leverage in torch.ao. It has a C++ runtime, accelerator support, kernel support, fast kernel supports, and late, lastly and not least, uh, debugging and profiling uh, functionality. And this is, you know, just like any other PyTorch project, this is fully open source. And because of its open source, we are also uh, partnering with uh, uh, companies like Apple, ARM, and Qualcomm to leverage their hardwares and accelerators and NPUs uh, on their devices. So going back to, so uh, the original problem was more about how to deploy PyTorch models on the devices. Uh, so underneath the hood, you have a PyTorch program. We, uh, we would use Torch.export to generate semantically equivalent graph representation of the program. And moreover, you can do compilations and transformations using all in Python and generate a um, executor's program that's ahead of time. And then you will be able to load this program onto your device for further, uh, for, for actual uh, inference. Um, I would like to show a quick uh, demo uh, about, uh, this is Llama 3.1, 8 billion parameter running on Android device. Uh, was it S24? Yeah, S24. Um, uh, by the way, this is uh, also available in our booths uh, next door. Um, it is using 4-bit you know, quantization, 8-bit activation, and using uh, extended impact to accelerate. So as you can see, uh, it's, uh, for 8 billion parameters, it's pretty fast. Uh, we are able to generate uh, roughly 10 to 11 tokens per second on, a, on an actual mobile phone here. Uh, 
So there's also emergence of uh, multimodal models, right? Um, not only text, but we are also expanding our functionality uh, to multimodal, and specifically in this case, we are showcasing Lava, which is able to uh, get in, in image inputs and image, uh, I'm sorry, text input, and be able to reason about the image and then be able to answer. So in this case, it's asking about the soccer players, how, uh, what are they wearing, what are they doing, so the, it is able to uh, answer it. Um, uh, we are also hitting roughly eight to nine tokens per second here, so. Um, anyway, so uh, that was uh, a quick demo. Uh, I want to say a bit about why we um, built ExecuTorch in the first place. So as you know, um, PyTorch is being used in research to build state-of-the-art research models, but there is a big need to shorten the life cycle from research to production in a more principled way. And a few of the principles uh, are here. Um, first is the authoring and deployment consistency. So you don't have to uh, you are sure what you're going to run on, on the model is in fact the same as the, what you have actually produced in your research model. And that also means there's no third party conversions. Um, the second is about uh, portability. Uh, it is written in a, the runtime is in a C++ runtime, 40 kilobytes, and it is able to uh, target most, most hardwares and embedded devices. Uh, third is composability and uh, modularity. So you can actually pick and choose different optimization techniques, quantization techniques, memory planning, and compilations, and then uh, you can all use the same APIs to hook and then uh, pick and choose different, uh, different optimizations. And it, it really uh, uh, helps you with the product developer productivity. And lastly, uh, we are able to leverage uh, the NPUs and DSPs and, uh, and the GPUs on, on embedded devices and hardwares. All right, uh, so this is, uh, we announced last year, 2023, the MVP preview release. Uh, earlier this year, we uh, showcased an LLM uh, show, uh, use case, and uh, today we are uh, announcing a beta status of the software. So that means uh, it's an API, uh, we are focusing on API stability, performance, um, robustness, and so on and so forth. Um, we have a release candidates uh, that is uh, as, as a branch that you can uh, see as of today. Um, it's available, but the official release will be later, uh, later in mid-October, so. Uh, and lastly, uh, next year we're planning to do a general availability release. So. Anyway, so uh, three things in this uh, what's new today, stability, performance, and coverage. So in the stability front, we are really focusing on robustness. I'll talk in a bit. Performance, you just saw these two examples of Llama and Lava uh, models being able to run quite fast. Um, I just want to uh, emphasize that this is, by doing these kind of examples, we actually were able to find all the critical bottlenecks and um, made performance improvements that can be also generalized to other models. So, and lastly, uh, increased kernels and uh, accelerated support. Uh, we are also built a benchmarking infra that you can that is continuously leveraging AWS device farm to continuously run models um, in the open source environment, and also on-device debugging and profiling support for, uh, for your productivity. So uh, on the first pillar, then the stability, uh, one thing uh, we are focusing on is the stable APIs. So that means the developer's application layer code can depend on ExecuTorch and still be able to uh, up, uh, and upgrade to the latest um, branch, re latest releases, and uh, you can also make sure it doesn't break. And the way we do it is that we actually mark APIs as stable, um, deprecated, experimental, and we also have a deprecation policy uh, for that. All right, uh, I would like to in invite my um, colleague Martin to talk about the rest uh, about uh, on-device Gen AI use cases. 
Thank you, Morgan. So um, let's uh, dig, a little, uh, dig a little bit deeper on the on-device GNI use cases and how Executorch uh, helped to um, run those uh, large models on devices. So the uh, first use case is, is on the CPUs. We know like CPUs is pretty critical to cover a wide variety of devices. And also it's good for the researchers uh, to try something new quickly. Um, and actual torch can now uh, run the Llama models and many others uh, out of box uh, with, with uh, uh, best, in, uh, uh, best performance. And our uh, major focus is on the ARM CPUs. Uh, we developed this 4-bit gem uh, kernel, uh, which uh, runs with, uh, with uh, achieve uh, peak performance uh, across those uh, Android phones, and also on the uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, we collaborate with Google to upstream this kernel to XMPAC. We also work uh, with ARM to feature the faster CPU prefill uh, through Clyde, uh, uh library, uh, which has, uh, uh, now has a similar 4-bit GM kernels. So in, ad in addition to CPU, uh, a critical uh, uh, puzzle piece uh, we have uh, for the on-device AI is MPU. Definitely we need CPU to set the baseline and uh, reference, but we see the advantage of uh, MPUs uh, with more tops, which is good for the faster preview. And also with, uh, it's used less power, so it's critical for the uh, battery life. Uh, currently, most software frameworks don't have the capability to efficiently uh, enable MPUs. How can ExactoTorch help on this uh, domain? We created the delegate APIs in ExactoTorch. MPUs can be accessed by delegating part of the flow of the uh, graph uh, into uh, the cor corresponding backends. We collaborated with Apple, MediaTek, Qualcomm, etc., uh, to integrate ExactoTorch into their deployment flows. Know that although MPU power is leveraged, we do not move away from the PyTorch and the ExecuTorch uh, ecosystem. Uh, it keeps the uh, consistency when compiled from the server to on device. Uh, staying inside this ecosystem uh, so that it also helps the users to debug uh, on device. Now, uh, Llama 2, 3, and 3.5, and other LLMs are running on phones through accelerators. Uh, please visit our uh, PyTorch demo booths for live demos uh, of Llama running on those MPUs, like in um, uh, Qualcomm MPUs and the MediaTek uh, uh, MPUs. Uh, we also saw some of our partners from Qualcomm uh, and uh, uh, MediaTek uh, sitting in this room. Uh, Bill Genchen and Kimish are going to give a talk on LLMs on edge uh, with AI accelerators later. We're also supporting multimodals. Uh, Morgan just showed the uh, live video uh, in the previous slide. Uh, in the demo booth, uh, we have also tried, uh, you can also try it out, uh, the demo of running the Lava model with both image and the text uh, as inputs. Uh, the image uh, encoder has uh, 300 million uh, parameters. We quantize it in a bit. And the text model has uh, 7 billion uh, parameters. We quantize it with 4 bit quantization. Uh, the AOT, both the AOT and the runner components uh, with CPU optimizations already landed in our repo. Uh, feel free to uh, check it out. Uh, we try to uh, build our software stack on top of the um, executor core with all the necessary components uh, for the multimodal as well uh, so that you can use all the components and compose them. Uh, to support the GI use cases above, uh, a number of uh, technologies are used. 
Uh, in this slide, we list a few, uh, a few of them. Uh, we use 4-bit uh, weight condition and uh, with 8-bit uh, dynamic activation for LAMA models. Uh, to further improve the post-training condition accuracy, uh, we integrated the new spin quantum technology. Uh, Excel Torch uh, extension LLM is created with uh, composable modules of LLM. Uh, power users can also hack the code to customize their own on-device GNI flow. We are actively working on the new technologies on the long context, uh, lower bit condition, and parallel decoding. Two more updates of Executorch. One is the uh, model benchmark uh, infra. We enable the OSS uh, reproducible performance benchmark infra, uh, either with on-demand uh, benchmarking request or scheduled benchmarking to monitor the uh, performance trend. Uh, uh, you can submit your request, and th those requests go through the GitHub uh, actions, and the benchmark runs on AWS device farm uh, to generate the performance matrix. Second update, uh, we are working on this experimental feature of on-device training and fine-tuning. Uh, but I, uh, by design, uh, this is composable with existing accessible torch flows and backends. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, we show this converging of the loss uh, when fine-tuning the NORA uh, 5.3 model uh, uh, on-device. Since it's a proof of concept, uh, there's a lot of ongoing work and features planned. Uh, stay tuned on our, uh, on our repo uh, for more. Let's go to the ecosystem and the community adoption of Executorch. First, for the um, ecosystem, Executorch does not work alone. Uh, it, it starts from the torch that uh, export. Vic just uh, had a, a great talk on uh, how, what's new in torch that export, where the compute graph is captured with dynamism. Uh, quantization is supported uh, by torchio. Uh, uh, Vasini just uh, uh, demonstrated that, where the low bit uh, representation kernels and quantization APIs uh, are hosted. We build this. LM vertical stack uh, with Torchat to showcase LM inference on mobile devices. Uh, for model sources, the model can be fine-tuned um, and directly from uh, TorchTune with PyTorch native support. Karthike just uh, went through that uh, in, in his keynote. We partner with Hugging Face as well to make the uh, model actual Torch compatible uh, like uh, Gemma 2B or 53 Mini. Executive Torch ecosystem is built with all the parts uh, working together. Even though Executive Torch is just coming to beta, uh, we've already seen active adoptions. Uh, it's being adopted by Meta products. Uh, Executive Torch is supporting Ray-Ban, Meta Smart Glasses, Oculus Quest 3, and meta apps uh, like Instagram and WhatsApp. Uh, it's been used uh, by developers in the community. Uh, examples include this Impenti mobile app uh, for the, from the software mansion. Uh, it's based on the uh, Efficient Sam and Swim transformer and use CoreML or Delegate uh, for the acceleration. Uh, Executor is also used in the uh, uh, inventory mobile app in Digica. Uh, running CV and OCR models uh, for medical devices. We see researchers uh, adopting actual torch as well. Uh, examples uh, are listed uh, on the uh, right hand side. To summarize, uh, coming back to Mergen's first slide, uh, we, uh, we provide uh, Executive Torch as a PyTorch platform to help deploy LLM and many other models uh, to edge devices. Uh, it will be in formal beta status soon in October. Uh, you are welcome to visit our GitHub repo and try it out. 
Uh, please visit uh, PyTorch demo booths for Android and iOS demos. Uh, there are also lightning talks uh, on, on a couple of uh, uh, separate topics. Uh, feel free to check it out. Thank you.